Hi, Tommy. I'm so glad you're here today. Hi, Pastor Keith. I am so glad to be here with you. Well, today is Mother's Day. Wow, aren't you thankful uh, for your mother? I am so glad that I have a mother. I am so glad for her. Well, you know, um, I have a gift for you, uh, Tommy. Really? What kind of gift? You know, my mother always said, sharing is caring. So I was feasting on, I was feasting on these Skittles. And I realized that they were really good. And I wanted to eat it all. But I thought, wait, maybe, maybe, maybe. I know Tommy likes it. So I, sh I saved this just for you. OK, this is for you, Tommy. Well, thanks, Pastor Keith. I am so glad you saved them for me. Sharing is caring. Thank you. I know you care for me. But Pastor Keith, I can see that we have some friends out there. I want to share with them. Do you think I could share this with my friends? Well, Tommy, I knew that you are a caring kind. So guess what? I brought more for you to share with them after the service. Would you like to give that to them? Oh, boy, that would be so great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Tommy's being a little kind today. <laughs> Mother's Day. <laughs> Let us pray. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Paul then stood up at the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even fall, found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. 
The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, one of the questions, main question in life is, where is God in all this? That was the question during the pandemic. And also many times it's the question when we run into conundrums, crisis, and confusion. As a pastor, I wish I knew what God is doing at our church. That would make my role as a pastor much easier. It will help with goal setting, with sermon preparation, and definitely with pastoral care. Finding God in our lives, that's a tough act. In our text, Paul was at the center of Western civilization, Athens. It's where the core ideas of the West came from. He knew the importance of the city. He needed to know where God was in this important city. Well, in doing research for this project, I found out that Egyptians had a transcendent idea of God. Transcendent meaning that God is beyond the scope of our understanding. That's why their gods were not like humans at all. Sphinx. You can never find something like a sphinx on earth. Likewise, in Christian tradition, we also believe that God is transcendent. God is beyond the scope of our understanding. Therefore, we say, God is a mystery. Well, that's one approach. But there's another way. The Greeks, the next empire, in contrast, had an imminent view of gods. They thought the gods were among them. Therefore, they made gods in their own image. Zeus, Hera, Apollos, and many other gods represented the spectrum of human traits. And we also adopted this idea of imminent God. God made us in the divine image. And therefore, if we study ourselves and our world, then we might understand our creator better. And also in the Gospel of John, when Jesus' disciples asked Jesus, please show us the Father. And he said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. This is very much in line with the imminent view of, of God. And also in our text, that's why Paul said, for in him, God, we live, move, and have our being. The Greeks think, and we also do, also, also think also that God is all around, through us, in us, and everywhere in the world. And we hold these dual and seemingly paradoxical views of God. God is both imminent and transcendent. One of the joys of our faith journey is discovering the imminence of God. We see God. We sense him. We're not, we're not some cosmic accident 
that exists as a speck of biological matter in this spinning third rock from the sun, which is hidden in the billions of stars in the Milky Way. Actually, we've been placed here for a purpose, and we are beautiful expressions of God. God is with us and is actively engaged in the affairs of humanity. However, the transcendence of God smacks us in our face. All of a sudden, we can't figure out where, where we are because we, can't, we don't know where God is. Remember those days during the pandemic where you didn't even know what day of the week it was? I didn't have a clue what month it was. Sometimes I had the wrong year. It was so confusing. That time, and sometimes now, God's absence seemed greater than his presence. Well, this happened to the eminent loving Greeks. They created mythology as a way to explain their world and themselves. But they had this one little problem. There was something they couldn't understand. There were some areas that was beyond their understanding. Therefore, they set up an idol to an unknown God. The title of my talk is The Obscure Corner Where God Resides. I'm not trying to put God down or diminish God, God's importance in our world. My point is that God is with us, the imminent God. But however, due to the transcendence of him, we get frustrated. We wonder, where the heck is he when you really need God? Well, this is where Paul came in. Paul knew exactly how to enter into a conversation with these Athenians through their unknown God. He found the obscure corner where God resided in that city. He knew exactly where to look despite the obvious obstacle of looking for God. Well, I'm going to give you several words that starts with the letter O, like obscure. So there's a lot of uh-ohs in this sermon. First, in order to locate, find those obscure corners, we need to observe. Paul was an astute observer of society, humanity, and more importantly, life. Therefore, he was familiar and thus understood and appreciated the Greeks. Paul quoted from a famous work by Philo Timaeus. This is the book where Plato noted that the maker and the father of the world is hard to find. That's why they had the statue dedicated to an unknown god. Paul was a keen student of the world. Well, too often, many Christians withdraw into their own community. The outside seems unpleasant, clashing with our Christian values. Therefore, we build this cocoon of Christian insulations to keep the secular out. An offshoot of this is retreating back to our past. We recall an idealized past and look to it with much, much Nostalgia. I was driving the other day. Man, a song from the 80s hit me. Oh my God, I felt like I was 20 again. Felt so good. You know, one of my favorite movies is the um, Guardian of the Galaxies. I didn't see the latest one. I will see it, but I'm kind of waiting for it to come to streams. But the reason I figured out why, because I don't watch movies, I don't, Repeat. Once I see it, I don't watch it again. But this, these movies, I've been watching over and over. And I figured out why I love that, that movie. It's because James Gunn is my age. And he incorporated many of the themes from the 60s, 70s and 80s and the songs from them. So whenever I watch it, I feel like I'm a little kid again. 
but not a kid. <laughs> but I cannot live over there. I have to be present here and now. I need to observe what is going on in 2023 in our world, in our society, in me, in the people I love all around me. I need to observe. The second, O, oh, the obscure place where God resides, are sometimes ordinary and common places of our lives. Ordinary is the second O. Oh. Elizabeth Barrett Browning said, Earth is crammed with heaven, and every bush aflame with God. But only those who see take off their shoes. Paul, like Moses, in a way, took off his shoes. He bared his soles. He became vulnerable and walked in the midst of the world, the pagan world, to observe God with humility, patience, and respect. It doesn't happen much now, but when my children were younger, like when they were four or five, they used to say things that sometimes made me do a double take. Like, what did you say? And it wasn't in an angry tone, but a surprise, in a joyous surprise. They would say things about what's going on in our lives that I thought were just perfectly ordinary and common, but with their innocent souls, curious minds, and most importantly, their humble hearts, they were able to observe God in the most common and ordinary circumstances. They saw God everywhere. Every time it happened, I said, wow, God is here with us. Where is God? In the ordinary, the common, and the usual. The world is crammed with the divine only if we take off the shoes. Well, the third O is the other obscure corner is a place we find things that are objectionable. Things that we find offense. Philip Yancey is a prolific Christian writer. In his book, Finding God in, in Unexpected Places, he wrote, Jesus himself Look for God, not among the pious at the synagogue, but in a widow who had two pennies left to her name, and in a tax collector who knew no formal prayers. He found his spiritual lessons in sparrows, sold at a market and in wheat fields and wedding banquets, and yes, even in the observation of a mixed race foreigners, foreigner woman who had five failed marriages. Jesus was a mastermind at finding God in unexpected places. Oftentimes I find God where I least expect it, the last place where I will look for God. Did you notice that Paul found God among the idols where you would, that's a place you will look for the God of Israel. This is a profound mystery. We find God in those places where we find offenses, objections, and conflicts. The last O is God can be found in the obvious but overlooked places. Well, today's Mother's Day. We cherish the best of motherhood. We're celebrating females who demonstrate this sense of care, nurture, protection, sharing, and bonding in our lives. We are grateful for all the females at our church. Anna Jarvis, who never had children, thought of Mother's Day in 1905 to honor her mother. It was so obvious to her about the importance of mothers that they reflected the beauty and the love and the dedication of God, but they were completely overlooked by society. Therefore, in May of 1908, she organized the first official Mother's Day celebration at a Methodist church in Grafton, 
West Virginia, not far from here. Did you know that in some traditions, Mother's Day has much greater church attendance than Christmas? Yes, mothers obviously reflect God's love, but have been overlooked for millennia. Well, let's celebrate this day by honoring those who have been overlooked. You know, my, some people say, Mother's Day is not just one day or one month. It's a whole year. I can't agree more. And just the way we are celebrating this overlooked but obvious God's reflection in our world, let's take time to notice people in our lives that we take for granted. Our siblings, our spouses, our children. Maybe that guy at the grocery stores who's always there, friendly, ready to serve you. I'm always, you know how, why I'm always thanking everybody before the sermon? Because every attendance, every volunteer, everything you give to God is such a reflection of the evidence of God in our lives. It seems so obvious, but overlooked. Thank you. Well, God is here. God is active in our community, and God is active in our seemingly secular, sometimes pagan world. Let's take time to observe and appreciate God's working, work in our culture, society, work, family, and in ourselves, in the ordinary, sometimes in the places of abject objections that we might have, and certainly in the common and the obvious and overlooked places. Where is God in all this? Right here at this church. You saw it in the bell ringing, the choir singing, the lectionary, the music, your smiles. God is so crammed into our congregation. I want to celebrate, especially on this Mother's Day. God is here with us. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, we are so thankful for you. You are visibly and sensibly with us. And Lord, especially on this Mother's Day, so many of our female members, all of them reflect your love, your kindness, your patience, your grace, and your mercy. And we celebrate today because we see you so clearly in them. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thanks for joining us. If you're interested in visiting us in person, we are at the corner of Liberty Meeting Court and Sugarland Road. Look forward to seeing you soon.